Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be previewing the 2024 NHL playoffs matchup between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Florida Panthers. And let me just tell you, this one is going to be a good one as we have the Battle of Florida yet again in the postseason. Always a treat when we get in. We'll take a look back here starting off with sort of the years from past in terms of the playoffs. So in 2021, these two teams did play. 4-2 was the final of the series. The second one was in 2022. It was a 4-0 sweep for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that brings us to this year, which is 2024. It's going to be a good one. And I think when we look at it, you know, a lot of the similar teams are sort of there. Tampa is very, very similar to what they were in 2021 and 2022, as well as Florida is somewhat the same, as well as they've added a couple key pieces to really sort of put them over the edge. But we'll get to that in just a second here. As we take a look at the scores from this year, Starting off on December 27th, they played 3-2 victory for the Florida Panthers. As well as on February 17th, Florida won 9-2 in a blowout fashion. Really impressive game from Florida in that one. And then the last game, the most recent one, was on March 16th between Tampa and Florida. 5-3 was your final. They might also just add there that the one game that Tampa did win was on the road against Florida at their home. Which is kind of a, an interesting part to sort of keep note of is obviously Florida has the home ice advantage. The one game game that they played on Florida ice ended up being taken by Tampa. I will say this, the home ice advantage won't matter too much in this series, just considering how close they are together. I don't think it'll be that much of a, an advantage where you think about other teams where, you know, they're traveling hours upon hours to get to their location. I don't think it'll be that much of an advantage in this one, but of course, time will tell there. We'll flip it over now to the sort of the players and what we're sort of looking for here. So we'll start off with the injuries. So a couple key injuries for the Florida Panthers, both of them were day-to-day. -day. So we have Aaron Exblad, who is day-to-day uh, -day with the lower body. He's been skating. He's been in non-contact. He's, he's sort of expected to return for game one. Whether or not he does, is it, that'd be a huge that'd be a huge loss for the Florida Panthers or a huge pickup if they could get him back. When we look at it, you know, Florida's defense is really what sets them apart. And, you know, the age-old exp expression, defense wins championships, definitely rings true in today's game. So when we look at it, you know, two big defense with OEL, Oliver ekman Larson, and Aaron Ekblad, those are two guys that really, you know, are going to be needed by the Florida Panthers if they're going to want a deep run at the Cup this year. And that's what they have. You know, they, they've really set their team up for success. And I'm looking forward to seeing if they have that sort of team this year to be able to win in that first round matchup. It's a tough one against Tampa. Always is a tough game against Tampa. And, and we'll see if they can move it along there. But as well, we'll take now a look at Tampa's injuries with Tyler Mott, Hayden Fleury, and Luke Glendening. Those three are day-to-day. -day. I would assume that they'd be back for game one, just sort of what we've seen in reports. I think the two Florida and the three Tampa very much expected to return. Whether they do, who knows? Obviously, you don't get too much in the playoffs. Everyone sort of tells you that they're 100%. So we'll see if they return 100% or a little bit less than that. Might be an interesting sort of point as well. A really huge loss going in for Tampa this year is Mikhail Sergachev. He, of course, got hurt. And, and unfortunately, he's not going to be returning for the first round, second round. Who knows? Third round, who knows? There's always the stuff that happens in the playoffs that we probably wouldn't expect. And, and I don't presume he would be back. But on the off chance, he is. We'll, we'll throw his name in in there uh, but he will be out for this series which is a huge huge loss for Tampa and we've seen it throughout the season you know they haven't been the same team without him sure they've won games when they had to but at the same time they've really been missing that defensive touch from Sergachev and now let's take a look at the key factors and of course you know if you're going to talk Florida in the postseason there's one player especially you have to take note of and that's Matthew Kachuk and one of the main reasons for that is you know He's a, a a stereotypical playoff player. We'll call him that, where you know he's gonna get under your skin, he's gonna be a pest, and he's gonna make Tampa lose their marbles. And because of that, you know, it's a key loss, it's a huge loss for uh, the Florida uh, the, uh, for the Florida Panthers if they were to lose them. But they have him. And, and really, when we look at it that way, you know, he's gonna be able to get under Tampa's skin against a, a really veteran team. And that tends to be the, the difference between a series, you know, whether or not Matthew can check and get under the skin, whether he can play to his top performance. He was a key part of the team last year. And, and really, when we look at it, I wouldn't be surprised to see him lead his team back to the Stanley Cup finals this year. But of course, lots of time still there. And my second X Factor player is Nick Cousins. Now, you know, similar to Kachuk, he's a player that's going to get under your skin, but he gets away with everything. He's not the player that, you know, people go after 
uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Everyone goes after Kachuk, but Cousins is really the sort of the the disturber in that group who, who's going to sort of separate himself and keep himself out of trouble out of the penalty box. But that's how he's so good is he gets under your skin and then he sends everyone else after the other guy. And at the end of the day, Florida gets on the power play, which is dangerous power play. And from there on out, that's how they're going to win hockey games. And the third one, I normally don't want to pick goalies for the X factors because obviously, you know, it's a goalie. If they get hot, the team's probably going to win the series. But Sergei Bobrovsky is a huge player for the Florida Panthers. If he's able to keep the puck out of the net, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to win. But at the same time, you know, Bobrovsky is a key part of the Florida Panthers. You look back to last year's series where they beat my Boston Bruins. And, you know, I mean, Bobrovsky kind of got hot at the right time, let his team pass that first round. And from there on out, you know, Florida built up their momentum, built up that confidence. And from there, they were just a team that was unstoppable. So, I mean, when we look at it, Bobrovsky is a huge part of the Florida Panthers and should really be looked upon as an X factor in the series, even if it's kind of an obvious one. I think it's he deserves to be on this list as an X factor. Now let's talk Tampa because we're going to have Eric Cernak here who's sort of filling the void for Sergachev and obviously, you know, not quite to the same caliber of a player, but at the same time, I think he's a, he's a player that can sort of fill that void if need be. I like him on that left side. Whether or not to play him, who knows? Obviously, they've had enough of a season now where they've sort of had enough time to experiment. But, of course, Hayden Fleury also hopefully will be able to come back and fill that extra spot. We'll see, obviously, once again, nothing has been finalized yet. But I think if they can put Fleury there, too, he's someone who can sort of minimize that that damage of not having Sergachev in the lineup. Of course, you know, time will tell whether or not Tampa is just going to get overrun by the Florida Panthers because lots of hockey still to be played. And I think, you know, we'll take a look now at the second guy of someone who really has to perform and really should be looked upon is the leading point getter in the NHL with Nikita Kucherov. Because when we look at it, you know, he's pretty good. And he should be expected as a star player to get points in the playoffs. And he's going to be an, an absolutely crucial part to Tampa's success just because of how good he is and how, how efficient he is at putting points up on the board, getting pucks in the back of the net, and getting his team able to put pucks in the back of the net. At the end of the day, if it isn't a guy like Nikita Kucherov, there's no one else that deserves an X factor on this team. Look for him to really put put forth the performance in this series to help Tampa get above Florida. He's one player that I'm really looking at, as well as Tanner Janot. And he's a player that a lot of expectations, hasn't really lived up to those expectations, but he's still a player that has the skill deep down. It's just a matter of if he can unlock it in time. And, you know, as they like to say, the best players come out at the right time. So we'll see if Janot is able to sort of pick up his groove find his game right towards as we, as we sort of head into that first round. The first couple games are going to be really apparent. And I think when we look at it, you know, Nick Paul is another sort of that, that third and fourth line is are lines that I'm looking at to really start to pick up their game. They've struggled a lot this year and it's sort of reflected in Tampa's success in the standings. So we'll see whether or not they're going to be able to find their game. If they are, watch out. Tampa's got a team this year. If they don't, then I mean, at the same time, not, cool, not a, terrible thing but he is a but Jano especially I think is a player a lot of expectations on him if you can find his game he's a player to keep your eyes on because he's going to be able to put points up on the board and he's going to be put a lot of scare into teams on both sides of the ice and now let's talk about the keys to success for both teams in this playoffs and we'll start here with of course the keys to the game for Florida with shut them down. If Florida wants any chance, they got to shut down that top six. Tampa's top six forward group is unmatched in the league. Maybe with Toronto, you could put up there Colorado, maybe. But, you know, it's an unmatched team. And they're going to put points up on the board. So if you can shut them down early, keep them off the board, frustrate them. And we'll talk about frustrate in the next point here. But if they can frustrate them to the point where they're not able to put pucks in the net, it's game over for the Tampa Bay Lightning because their bottom six isn't quite what it used to be, especially on those cup runs. So nonetheless, we'll see whether or not Florida is able to shut them down. If they are, they're poised for a real quick series win on this one. Second one is, of course, the Kachuk factor. Whenever you have Kachuk on the ice, he's going to get under your skin. And he's a crucial part to this team for the Florida Panthers. So when we look at it, you know, whether that's the Kachuk factor extends to Nick Cousins, he's another player that, you know, He's going to get under your skin, and I think in general that's what the Florida Panthers have to do to beat a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning is just throw them off their game any way you can, whether that's the goalie. We saw it last year with the Bruins. Or just, you know, playing your game and frustrating teams to the point of no return where they start making mistakes and capitalizing on it. 
The third point here, of course, is momentum. For the Florida Panthers, we saw it last year. They, they had a rough start, right? They went down 3-1, but then they started building momentum with each game. If Florida can continue the, their momentum from this from this uh, the, uh, the regular season from this year, you know, they're a dangerous team at the at this turn at this um in these playoffs. So don't be surprised to see them slowly build their way up. As well, let's take a look at Tampa. So for Tampa is don't fall for it. Don't play into the Kachuk. Don't play into Cousins. Don't play into the team that's going to frustrate you. Play your game. Keep it simple. Don't do anything dumb. Beyond the stars for Tampa, this is a really important one. When we look at it, Tampa obviously has a lot of top six scoring. A lot of their points come from their top six, and their bottom six is sort of more so in that defensive realm, or at least tries to be. For Tampa, they got to find some offense beyond their top six because uh, the way Florida's team is structured, they're going to shut down that top six as best they can. They're going to put their sort of defensive lines out against that top top two lines for the, for the Lightning. They're going to have some problems if they can't get offense beyond their top two lines. So it's going to be crucial for the Tampa Bay Lightning to find success below that top six and that and those bottom two lines of pairings and forwards it's going to be a crucial crucial aspect to Tampa's success at this in the series as well the last point here is lock it down do not let Florida score goals because when they score goals it's like a snowball it just keeps rolling down the hill we've seen it time and time again we saw it the other night in that Toronto game where you know Toronto went up early and it looked like they were going to dominate and then there was a bad penalty and sure enough Florida scored a goal then it was another one then it was another one then it was another one and it's just time after time if Florida gets that ball rolling it's going to keep tumbling down the hill and they're going to have some problems so with that, all that being said those are your keys to success and now let's take a look at the matchup and prediction so for the matchup obviously the offense it has to go to Tampa the way the way Tampa is structured compared to Florida on paper you know they they have the scoring compared to the defense so we'll talk about that after but in, the, in terms of offense Tampa has it by far and I think you know it, it's pretty safe to say Tampa has it and then for the defense it's the other way right where especially especially without Sergachev Florida has the dis, very very distinct advantage on their defensive side especially if they can get x -Blad as well as Oliver ekman Larson back definitely an interesting one there as well then the goaltenders I I mean, Vasilevsky, yes, you know, if Vasilevsky finds a way to get hot, the series might be over, you know, Bobrovsky is a solid goaltender too, but if Vasilevsky gets hot, he's obviously the better goaltender, both goalies are hot at the same time, it's going to make for a great series, probably go to seven, wouldn't be surprised for any games, I wouldn't be surprised to see if the game goes four, five, six, or seven, honestly, I think the shorter the series goes, the more it'll favor Tampa. But at the end of the day, Florida, I'm going to take as the winner in six games here. I think just the way Florida's built, they're going to be able to frustrate opponents, especially a team like Tampa, who's used to sort of scoring success and all that. The veteran leadership for Tampa might sort of help them through that. But at the end of the day, I think when we look at it as an overall perspective here, Florida has to be your winner. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you realize you're subscribing, tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on the matchup between Florida and Tampa. Until next time, see you.